All right, still doing these videos. I'm going to do it all the way to Swan Reach. Um, I probably won't be finished. Oh, I might be finished before Swan Reach. It's still another hour and a half at least. Um, I should be done by then. There's a couple of good stories. The rest is just... Mate, I'm, it's all camping. I mean, I'm not going to go right into the camping thing. I will... I'm going to do another video talking about, you know, what I did in a, in Gumbawa and in Echuca for food, washing, cleaning and all that sort of stuff because some things are a little bit out left field. So I want to sit down and explain it. And I'll do that a bit later. I'm in the middle of talking to some of my stories at the moment. So I just want to get that over and done with. Now, I sat there and um, left a chuka. Now, on the Monday, I caught a really big fish, which is really good. Uh, because I knew I was going to paddle for a couple of days to get to Gumbawa. Gumbawa was now my next spot. Stop. So you're talking about sort of, I don't know, mid-January-ish. Mid-January, roughly. Maybe early January. And I sat there and left it, left a tree car, got to go and bail. Right now, not much to talk about there. Actually, there's one thing, because I can't really remember where it happened. So, I can't really remember ha where it happened, so I'll put it in here. So I'm pretty sure it was before Swan Hill. So I'm, I'm paddling along, and I pull up to a snag. Sometimes about an hour beforehand, I'll pull up to a snag and drop a line in. Right to, um, this is why I think it was after, after a tree, because I had shrimp. And I didn't fish before a chuka, so it must have had to have been after a chuka. I'm pretty, I know, it was before, I'm 90% sure it was before Swan Hill. So I sat there, and there's a lot of um, private property. This one, I don't think it was after a chuka, because I think it must have been um, National Parks after a chuka. I don't know. I can't remember what happened. But I pulled up to a snag next to um, a property, private property, right? I had no sign saying private property. But, you know, the guy came out in his ute, right? So he pulled up in his ute, and I sat there and gone, oh, here you go, mate, how are you? Because everyone's been friendly, country people and whatever. You know, not too many arseholes and all that sort of stuff. And he gets out of his car with a shotgun. Now, he didn't do the whole shh, shh, shh like this or start pointing it around or waving it around or whatever. He didn't do any of that. He just had it in his hand and sat there and said, mate, you need to get off my property. You know, you're fishing, you're on my property. And I said, mate, and I was, like, you know, 10 metres away from the riverbank, you know, hooked up to a snag. Right, and I said, mate, I'm not on your property, I'm fishing on the river, I ain't moving. Right, I'm going to be camping over there, um, I need to catch a fish to eat for dinner. Right, I you know, don't have a lot of food. And he goes, mate, I don't need your life story, you just need to move. I said, okay, fuck you. And I said, fuck you. I said, um, if you want to talk to me, fuck the gun off, put the gun back in your fucking car. And I said, and I'm not moving. So if you're going to tell me to move and ask me to move and keep talking to me about that, you waste the time, just get in your truck and fuck off. Call the cops, tell me to move if you want me to. I'm not moving, I'm on the river itself. I'm not touching your fucking bank. Right? And he goes, the tree's on my property. I said, it's trees in the fucking water. All right? That's it. Fuck the gun off if you want to talk to me. But ultimately, if your conversation is going to be about me moving, that's not going to happen. I'll see you later. Like that. And I actually turned my back to him. You fucking cunt, this, that, and the other, and whatever. Like that, mate. Piss. I didn't want to swear like that in there. Sorry. Um, and that's what he said. That's understand what he said. Um, uh, like this. I said, that, nah, see you later. Like this. And I just didn't say another word to him. He, he drove off, never came back. The cops never came. I didn't catch, didn't have catching a fish. Uh, I stayed there for another 45 minutes and then just went over and sort of caught a fish on my side, actually. Uh, but, yeah, that happened. I've got a funny feeling that might have been before a chuka, actually. I've got a funny feeling that was before a chuka. Because I don't think there's too many private properties after a chuka. I think most of it's um, forest. Because you've got the... Um, oh, no, that's after, that's after Gumbawa. Oh, that, that, that's what, before Swan Hill. Because you got the Barma, Barham, Barham. you got Barham National Park and stuff like that. So anyway, so anyway, that, that happened along the trip somewhere. Um, and that's true. Well, that's exactly how it happened. He had a gun, shotgun in his hand. Yeah, he didn't do the whole chick chick like this and start waving around and pointing at me or anything like that. But he had it in his hand. Right, I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, what, you think that's going to fucking scare me? You're not going to shoot me. You're not going to do nothing with me. I don't even know if it's loaded. Like, I literally, he did nothing but hold it in his hand. You know, if you, put, if you want to talk to me, put the gun in your hand, but if the conversation is going to be about me moving, you're wasting your breath. I don't have to move. I'm on the river itself. I'm not on, I'm not on your property. Right? Um, and that's it. Conversation I haven't done with. Anyway, so, look, he, 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 he left. Now, I left um, Echuca. I started paddling down. Now, I had a really big fish in Echuca on the Monday, a really big one, like a like a 50-centimetre fish, and I ate that whole lot. I was quite full, and I was quite lucky because... I tried to fish on the way through, didn't catch anything from Monday through to thir through to Thursday. So I got through Barham, I got through Kundruk, um, 
G'day guys, if you see this video, I was going to try and stop off, but um, yeah, I had to sort of make a move. Now, oh no, that's after Gumbia. That's after Gumbia. I hadn't gone to Gumbia. Kundrup's after Gumbia. So I got through, I got through a tree car. I did stop to get food in a tree car. Um, I got past the tree car, got through Trumbury Weir. I'll explain Trumbury Weir. Oh, I don't have to tell you anymore because I showed you got the, there's a video that says going through a lock. So watch that. That's what going through a lock's about. I don't have to explain it. I did explain it in the original videos, but because I hadn't gone, because I hadn't shown you going through a lock, I wasn't going to, but I did this, did this video. So there's a video of me going through a lock and that's a whole, I had to spin around, so you can't actually watch the doors opening completely, but you, you're going to get an idea. And I'll get pushed around in that video, I'll get pushed around a lot because he left the back valve open. Right, I got a funny feeling at another spot it happened at the same time because it been twice I've been pushed up against that wall. So I reckon another time it was open a little bit. I didn't notice it on this one here. Uh, you could see it coming up, coming up, coming up, fill it, trying to fill up. Uh, but in the in the first one I did where I got pushed up against the wall a little bit, um, I couldn't notice that. I didn't notice it. Now I don't know if it did happen or didn't happen, but I didn't notice it. Um, and the guy at the front of me, there was another guy in a boat in front of me. Um, in the lock at the same time, the first time it happened, and he was getting pushed around a little bit as well, and he was getting pushed forward, so he had to start his motor and reverse back up. So he was getting pushed around a little bit as well, so maybe they had the, that one open a little bit, but the second one was open a lot. You'll notice in the right, the front right hand side, you'll see the water sort of swirling, you see it sort of coming up from the bottom, right, and that's because it's filling up. Right, I've seen it emptied fill up. I've seen it fill up while it's emptied, right, because I had to wait for it, and I sat there and said, and it wasn't time. They were filling it up for the halfway point and whatever, and I was told that I couldn't um, go through until one o'clock, so I sat there and watched him do it. So I know what it looks like when it fills up. So they'd left the back valve open when they were trying to drop it down. Just something to look at, look out for. Um, now, so I got through the lock, gone through. Now, I went past this sandbar bend place called Sandbar Bend on Gumbar Island itself. Um, I sat there, and uh, there was people camped there, so I thought, screw it, I'll only go a little bit up, and um, I'll come back for it, right? Now, I went a full day because I thought I might find another, I thought I might find another sandbar. I didn't, right, because it was very similar to the Chuka one, just a very steeper one, but I reckon it would have been all right for me to stop at, right. Now, uh, it was not as big uh, and didn't look as good as the thing, but it was least it was going to be sand. I can keep myself a bit cleaner through winter, you now being in sand in the water, right. Don't know how far into the water it went. That was going to be a chance I had to take, but at least the campsite itself was going to be sand and not mud. Yeah, especially in winter. It didn't worry me if it was going to be mud, but you know, just you know, less mud, better off. Now, um, I went 40 k's past it, thinking I was going to find another one. I didn't, so I tried to make my way back. Now, I sat there and paddled four days past. I did find some blackberries. Now, if I, I remember in the other video I did, so I did, I called them raspberries, right? If I say raspberries, I mean blackberries, all right? Now, I found some blackberries. I know I said it then. Found some blackberries on the side of the river. I sat there and had a gutful because I never ate from on Tuesday, Wednesday, and I found the blackberries on Thursday. Uh, so I ate uh, probably about a pound and a half's worth. I didn't want to eat too much, so didn't know how it would affect my stomach with being an empty stomach and all that sort of stuff. Having you know, so much fruit and berries and all that sort of stuff. Now, I sat there and had a, had about a pound and a half, two pound, it's just something to put in my belly. Right, I paddled uh, an extra day. And got to Friday and found a spot to stay for the weekend. Um, because any time I was on the river for Friday, I and yeah, because at that stage I'd only paddled about ten days. I'd only been on the river paddling for actually ten days, even though I'd been on the river for nearly two months. Right, nearly two months of um of my trip had been on the river so far, but I only been ten days. So I sat there and um, so I sat there and uh, got to Friday and. Thought, nah, well, that's fine. I find it hard to find spots to camp on the weekend because obviously people are camping, you know, to stay the night. And because of my setup with the outriggers and that, I need certain spots to stop at. I can't stop anywhere. Yeah, you know, I've got to have a spot where I can sort of get out and on an angle and this and that and everything else. So I'm a little bit uh, restricted on where I can pull in, right? So that cuts it down a little bit too. So on weekends, I always stop for the weekend. And that gave me a chance to have a wash and a clean up and any, 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 anyway. So it was kind of kind of good to do that. Um, you know, paddling, like, you know, I'll probably, after tonight, I'll stop somewhere. And um, my plan is to buy some food and um, some meat and stop somewhere for the weekend uh, for a couple of days. 
Because I think it is the weekend. I think today's Friday. Yeah, today's Friday. I've got a funny feeling today might be... Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I've got a feeling today might be... Um, today might be um, Easter. Because a lot of campers. Last weekend, I thought last weekend was Easter. And there wasn't that many people out. But this weekend, there's heaps. So I think I've got... I don't know. I've got no access to the internet, so I can't, um, I can't check it out. All right, so paddling down still. Now, got to my weekend spot at a true car, and just around the corner was some more blackberries, right? I said blackberries, but I was thinking raspberries in my head then. I managed to stop it. Now, I sat there got to a point where I sat there on the Saturday. I didn't catch anything on the Friday, Arvo. I stopped, got my can set up, and, um, yeah, got my can set up, and that takes a couple of hours, and it's quite a hard... Oh, no, no, that, that one there only takes about 45 minutes. Because only the weekend, I put pulled the main stuff out I needed. Right, so that only took a weekend. That only took that hard. About 45 minutes, roughly. Now, I sat there and, um... I say that a lot, I sat there. Every time I say it now, I just think of it. Now, I just... <laughs> I just do it, so. I sat there and, um, set my camp up. I went for a fish on the Friday hour, mate, and I was getting a lot of a lot of snags. Now, one thing throughout this trip is the current is a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Um, the original trip was meant to go all the way down, then back up and find a spot near Gumbear Island. So I would have been back up, I would have already done the trip by now, and looking for a camping spot. Now, if I'd gone all the way down. And I reckon I could have gotten to here somewhere, I reckon I still could have done it. And found a spot here to spend a month, because there's a spot over there I can go. It looks like it'll be good for a whole winter. So I could have done it, and I could paddle against the current up this end. But I made the mistake of staying up that end. Although... I still would have had to wait in the nice. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. The plan, the original plan was to go all the way down and then come back up and then spend the winter. But I've done it the other way around now, except for spending the winter because I can't because I can't live off the land anymore. I've got to make the run. I'm making the run down now. Now I stopped at, stopped this place uh, in Gumbear Island. Quite a fed. Uh, nursery bend number two. I oh, know that was my. That's where I stopped. Uh, I can't remember what bend it was because a lot of the bends have names to them in the maps so that was my final spot nursery band that was the main spot i stayed at so i stopped there i had um i went fishing on the friday arvo sinkers were a big bugbear for me because um the currents are a lot stronger i don't i never had to have big sinkers in, in the old days sorry i just waffled on for so long i never had to have big sinkers even on the Murray, never had big sinkers so the currents are definitely f faster than it used to be and i caught, spoke to a couple of old boys on the gumbar island and, you know, some of the old guys go, oh, I've been here for 40 years. I've been coming here for 40 years and blah, 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 like this and whatever. And, yeah, no, no, no. and, um, and even they say the, the current's a lot stronger now than it was 20 years ago. Even though they've got the uh, the new dam in there, the new weir, Tarumbury, um, it's a lot stronger. I've got five k's to go. So it's still about an hour and a bit to go, an hour and a half to go, roughly. I'm going really slow today. I'm just doing this video. I'm not in any hurry. What are we at? 62%. As long as the phone starts, actually, I should plug it back in because I need it 100% when I get to town. I might need it. I might need to have it at 100% when I get into town. So if I plug it in now, I'll have to set it up a bit because it's going to slide off. That should be all right. Seems all right. All right, it might slide off. See what happens. Probably about 13 minutes. All right, so I get to, like I said, I get to my campsite, the weekend went, blah, blah, blah. Ah, oh, shut up. See how much louder they are? And that is only a couple of them making that noise, and that's cockies. They are so much louder. So much louder. So terrible. Now, I uh, didn't catch anything. Things were a bugbear. I'll explain that. Uh, so on the Saturday, I jumped in my canoe, went around the corner, and went back to the spot. I hope you can hear me. They are uh, freaking loud. And for no reason, eh? No real reason. They just do it. They do it every night and every morning. And they're doing it loud at the moment. Now, I sat there and um, uh, did catch a, a small perch. Well, a good-sized perch. An eating-sized perch, but not quite big enough for a meal, considering I hadn't eaten for four days. Right, three days. Now, um... So I sat there and um, went around the corner. No, I got the raspberry, the blackberries first. Went around the corner and I ate every single one I could see on those vines. Right, now I've got to say, there's so many thorns on those freaking things. I'm going to go over this side away from them. Go in the middle. Away from the trees. 
So it could be because of me, I'm there. I doubt it because I do it even when I'm not there. Yeah, you know, if I'm right down there, they'll probably end up doing it. Uh, excuse me. Now, I sat there and um, got the ras blackberries. <laughs> I told you. I kept saying it in the old videos as well. Now, I've got the blackberries. I ate every single one. Now, that's full of fucking spines and thorns and that. And there's animals that you can see where the animals are sort of burrowed into the actual bush itself and made themselves little dens, right? I don't know what freaking animal it is, and it's something a decent size, you know, at least a foot high, so maybe a wombat or something like that. Um, they're as tough as nails, man. With those thorns, they're as tough as freaking nails. Oh, Frey, oh, man. God, I got torn to bits. I, got, I had to stop wearing my clothes. I had to stop wearing my jumper to do it, because I wore that a little bit, you know, to keep the sun to stop getting burnt. Uh, it's got a little bit hot, obviously, but you know, I didn't do it that often. I was really hot days, I didn't worry about it, and stayed under the shade. But when I had to move around and go into safe for a fair bit, I'd put my jumper on just to stop getting sunburned. I didn't have a hell of a lot of sunscreen, so I kept that for my nose and ears as best I could. And this here. No. And I got given that sunscreen by somebody. Now, I was, actually, no, I didn't have any sunscreen at that stage. I didn't have any sunscreen at that stage. Uh, anyway, so I sat there and... Um, oh, fucking hell. I feel like I'm off and gone now. Might have to have a rest from this. Uh, got back to my campsite and caught the fish and ate it. Now on the sun, that was on the Sunday. Now on the Sunday, I sat there and had an old guy rock up. Didn't catch anything on the Sunday, so I decided to eat two tins of food that day because I'd only had basically a guts full of um, raspberries and one fish since Tuesday, right? And that's on Saturday. So I kind of figured I've got to be sensible here, and so I opened up a tin of a tin of um, soup. And I ate, while I was waiting for that to cook, I ate um, a tin of baked beans as well, right? Just because, yeah, it's four days, it's, I've got to be sensible about it. And I had plenty of food there. I still had um, about 30 odd cans there. You know, so, for winter, I had enough one, one a week, one tin a week, right? So, it wasn't too bad. And that's all I wanted, you know, one tin a week. You know, I know I'm going to catch enough fish to cover me. You know, I couldn't catch any animals, which I had been doing okay. Um, I'd caught a few, a few animals up until then but i hadn't been catching animals while i was traveling down the river so like i said i went from tuesday to friday paddling down the river stopping once a night uh fished a little bit but did, didn't set up any traps it wasn't worth it now uh on the sunday at this campsite i sat there and uh, had this old guy he was camped in a um camper camper bus thing um uh touring bus type sort of deal about a 14 seater like one of those small school bus type sort of deals yeah, the camp camp groups or the school buses have. Now I sat there and um, he rocked up on his push bike. He push bike from his to down to mine. We're about sort of he was about 500 metres around the bend, maybe roughly. I can see his camp from mine, but it's quite a fair way down. And he pushed bike up, came to say hello, and brought his dog down. Now his dog um, didn't rip up the sticks this time, but his dog was allergic to the sunlight, so it had like big sunglass goggle type things, like those um, the flying goggles they used to have in the old days. Yeah, with the soft widths and yeah, with the um with the old biplanes uh bi wing planes and he sat there and um uh the young dog had that you know looked young nice fun dog you know like to have a bit of a play around and that so he rocked up we had a bit of a chat for an hour or so talked about a few different things and um he was a bit of a truck driver looked like a bit of a a bit of a pain he has to be a boss of sound like um I don't know, he reckoned, the way he was talking, it sounded like he didn't like being told what to do, right? You know, and sometimes, you know, boss needs to. You know, I was a bit of a micromanager. I can understand people being annoyed with me, and I think people were annoyed with me. I micromanaged a little bit more than I probably should have. But it's just because I like things done the way I do it, and I just um, make sure the one percenters are done. And it's more to set up, you know, different things here and there. You know, there's some people you have to keep an eye on, and some people you don't. Now, and I even micromanaged some people I didn't need to, really. And um, that, that's just the way I did it. It wasn't too bad. But I wasn't rude about it. Never ever re really rude about it. Uh, I was rude if people were being dangerous. Or sometimes if people are lazy or being on their phone. If they're on their phone while they're supposed to be working, I freaking hated that. Um, I didn't care if they're on their phone. Like, policy was no phones on ramp. I didn't care if they're on their phone when there's nothing to do. You know, sitting there waiting for the next plane to come in, blah, 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 because I worked at the airport. Didn't give a shit about that at all. But if they're actually in the middle of working and should be cleaning a plane and they're on their phones, well, get put your fucking phone away, you know? Arseholes, you know, let no one else cover their fucking workload, you know? 
that sort of thing. It's more the laziness side of things, not having an actual phone. Um, I don't see the point in it. I was never on the phone, hardly on my phone. I was on it a bit, you know, to see what time the next plane was coming in and blah, 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 but that was it. No, no, I don't go on Facebook. I don't go on YouTube and all that sort of stuff at work. In fact, I don't go on Facebook much at all. YouTube, I was on a lot. Uh, YouTube, I was on a lot. I like the videos and that, especially like trying to learn how to do a lot of stuff for this trip. Anyway, so he, he sounded like that. He sounded like sort of like he didn't really like to be told what to do. So I don't know. I reckon he would have been a bit of a pain in the ass as a worker. If he was a good worker, it would have been good. But he was a shit worker and, and like that, then it didn't, didn't matter. Now, have a good worker. If you don't need to talk to him, I don't care. Yeah, we had a couple had a couple of guys like that anyway so anyway so i sat there and um hey we sat there and spoke for a bit and whatever and he sort of went back now i spoke about the sinkers and a bit of an old man move for him because he was about 75 he was about 75 a bit of an old man move for him you know what brain wise for the get because i told him i had heaps of sink heaps of hooks but i didn't have many sinkers left right i couldn't even use them as proper am ammunition for my um for my uh, slingshot because sinkers are really good for slingshots and as for the purpose I sinkers for slingshots um, my slingshot anyway uh, I couldn't use them in that because um, oh I think I forgot to mention that's how I was getting some animals as well with slingshot now I sat there and um, told him I was running out of sinkers right now in an old man moving in I told him you know, about the food situation and everything else and what I hadn't eaten for a couple of days but that's alright I'll get back in the swing of things and blah 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 yeah in the upbeat you know sort of thing I have um back in those days a little bit less upbeat at the moment no nah, I'm fine I'm fine I am fine now I sat there and um he came back he, so he left he came back about an hour later uh about half an hour later with um a packet of hooks they had about now I told him I had about I remember saying this 500 hooks I've literally got 500 hooks no exaggeration in my tackle box right um so he brought down a container with another 300 roughly right <laughs> so I've gone oh Thank you, mate. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's great. Yeah, like this thing, and I don't need all these hooks. Yeah, but I appreciated it. Yeah, he was trying to do the right thing, obviously. Yeah, that's just funny. Just an old man move. Uh, so anyway, so he gave me those hooks, and he also so he's got a pretty good setup, right? Because he lives in that van for uh, yeah about a month. He comes up to the river for about a month every year. Um, he lives in Castlemaine. I probably had a beer with him, but I was at the Castlemaine pub a hell of a lot. I had a mate that lives in Castlemaine. So I, if he drinks at the Castlemaine pub, um, I can't remember what it's called now. I can't remember what it's called. But if he if he if he drank there, I think I can't remember if there's one or two. I think there's only one. I can't remember. But if he was there, there, and, uh, I think it might be the Royal. Um, yeah, like most towns have a Royal, a Royal, a Royal Mail, the Railway, the Courthouse, something like that, pub, hotel. Uh, now, hey. Came down with a frozen steak, a frozen porterhouse steak, and it was frozen solid. Now, frozen solid. So he's got a pretty good setup in his van, in his own little truck, that um, lets him freeze things properly, right? And he can keep it frozen. Not like Wayne, <laughs> with his um, peas, with his corn. Now, I sat there and um, I took it off him. He said, yeah, because he held it, held it in his hand. He sort of, you can add that too, like that. You eat that. You know, I've got plenty of food to keep me going through to the end. Um, you know, you, you had that. Like that. And I said, oh, nah, like this guy's, oh, I didn't want to say no. I was going to take it. I was 100% going to take it. It was a steak. No. Oh, uh, yeah, I wasn't going to be rude and not take it. He'd, he'd gone, he'd specifically come back to my campsite to give it to me, so I didn't want to be rude. Um, I had said no to a lot of people about getting, getting food, but this one here I said yes. And I said no to a lot of people. Like every, pretty much every person that came through my campsite of the Druka asked me if I needed help. No, nah, I'm fine, mate. You need food? No, no, not that. And a couple of people asked me a couple of times. I said, you know, I don't mean to sound rude. I said, but if I need help, I'll come and see you. I promise you. I promise you I'll come see you. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yep, no worries then. Like I said, a couple of them shoved it in my face. You know, I ate it. I didn't mind me. So I think all up I've had about five feeds. Oh, I'll probably say about seven feeds. Uh, up until that point, I'd only had, two, I'd only had three. Four. Four. The sausages, the Christmas dinner... And the two meals, those people gave me, so four. So, it adds up, eh? Hey? Sometimes you think, oh, I've only had a couple, but when you actually really think about it, you've had more than what you think. I've had more than what I think. But at that stage, it was definitely only a four. Right, this would have been my fifth. Now, I sat there and um, took it, and he's sort of handing it over to me, and he's, because I was in the middle of cooking my t soup, right? And he's handing it over to me, and he's looking at the soup, cooking. And I'm sitting there going, oh, oh, please don't take it back. Please don't take it back. So that's why I know I wasn't going to say no, because it was steak and it was a porterhouse. 
I don't think they, usually they point to where they're squawking, and they squawk right at you. Rah, rah, that's what they did to, well, I can't say that's what they usually do, but that's what they did to the um, koala. That's what they're doing koala, just facing it and squawking right in its face, nearly. Um, but they're not, they're not even pointing me, they're facing to, they're facing the, um, they're facing the, the frog face. Actually, there's one, oh, there's heaps. You look up there, and it's almost like the movies. Yeah, when, um, if you've seen Sahara, right, there's this movie called Sahara, it's not a bad one, it's about, um, like a, a treasure hunter sort of deal, right, and, or any movie, maybe Star Wars or something like that, and you're going through, like, a valley, which I'm going through right now with the rocks there, and, um, with a big cliff face, and you have, um, the enemy dotted lot right along, you know, sitting there, and they've had to sort of, ooh, we're surrounded, then they give up, you know, put their hands up. Well, um, it's a bit like that with these cockies, because I'm going down here, and they're all watching me paddle down, and there's, there's probably about 60 of them up there, I'd reckon, roughly. All camped in those little holes. Anyway, so, um, he gave me the steak. He looked at my thing, and I said, I'm th in my head thinking, I still want it, I still want it. So he gave it to me, that was fine, 26 minutes already. Jesus, I feel like I'm waffling on. We're nearly done. I'm going to keep it as it is. If you don't want to watch it, that's fine. I'm going to have a couple of informative videos, it'll be shorter. The first couple, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it, and then, um, then, yeah. Now, I sat there and um, took the steak off him, and I never ate it that day. I kept it for the next day. It was really hot days, but I kept it in the bottom of my canoe. I knew it would thaw out. I didn't think it would get that warm that it would go off, and um, I ate it the next day, so I paddled. Now, he left on the Monday morning. I'd already, I decided by Sunday, oh, sorry. Now, this guy, he left, gave me the steak, and he left, right? Now, one of the conversations I'd had with him was the fact that you'd think I would be uh, missing beer, right? And it was nothing to do with asking for beers or wanting beers or anything like that. I told him that, I think I told him that I'd been given beers by people, and that didn't worry me at all. I don't miss beer at all. I really don't. I don't mind having a beer with somebody, but I, I don't miss beers. If I don't have them, I don't care. I've been sat around campfires with uh, campers while they're drinking and I'm not camping. It has not worried me. Just give me two seconds. Oh, little blue patches. Little bit blue patches behind me. Ooh. My turn. It's actually, gets, it's getting a little bit brighter. I think the clouds are getting a little bit thinner. Oh, this morning I wasn't quite sure if we were going to get rain or not. I don't think we will now. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like the right clouds, but I could be wrong. I don't know enough about weather to do, know it. It just it doesn't look right for rain. Anyway, so... I told him that I don't give a shit about, the, the, the main thing I miss is actually soft drink, that is my advice at home, I didn't drink much at home, but I drank a lot of soft drink, a lot more than I should have, um, that's why I got the flood now, I've lost a lot of weight, but I've still got the flood, I'll never get rid of that, I knew I wouldn't, didn't matter, uh, I knew I was going to lose a lot of weight on this trip, now I sat there and um, he gave, he went back to his campsite, and he comes back again about a half an hour later, an hour later, right, with th two beers, Right, and he said something about having wine. He goes, oh, I've only got three beers left. I go, no, 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 mate, no. I'm not, I'm not asking for beers. I'm not Because he goes, oh, I've only got three beers left, and I've only got, like, this wine. I've only got wine and, and like, stuff like that. I said, no, mate, I'm not asking for nothing. Because he said he had no soft drinks. I said, I'm not asking for nothing, mate. It's all good. It's okay. I'm not, and this, I think this was before the steak. I said, or it could have been when he brought the steak up here, actually. I don't know. No, 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 it wasn't. No, it was definitely when he first came down, before he brought the steak down. Now, I sat there and um, said, no, mate, I'm not asked for beer. I'm not asking for it. I'm not suggesting it. I don't, I told you. I'm, that doesn't worry me. Uh, and if you haven't, you know, I'm not asking for soft drink off people. I'm not sponging off people, you know. Well, he comes back about an hour later after he brought the steak. What the fuck's that? There's something in the, something in the tree there. I don't know what it is. I get, I get a little bit nosy about this sort of stuff. I don't have much else to look at, so any, anything interesting I'd like to have a look at. Just give me two seconds. I've got my um, binoculars. I don't even know, because it looks like, oh, I think it's just a, a tree that's grown weirdly. Yeah, it is. It's, just, it's a really, it's a branch that goes really fat and then really thin, because it looked like a dead bird. The colours look like a dead bird. And, yeah, just yeah, just the angle on the way it was sitting, it looked like a dead bird in a tree. I don't know. Um, yeah, so he said said about the beers. No, 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 mate. I'm not. No, that, that's not. I'm not even close to suggesting that. I would never ever do that. I wouldn't have the balls to ask or something like that anyway. But yeah, no. Nah. But after about an hour after he uh, he brought the steak down, he comes back and brings two beers. 
And I turned around and said, no, 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 mate. No, 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 like that, because he starts to hand up. No, nah, mate, you told me only had three beers left. I'm not drinking your last beer. And he goes, look, he goes, I could sit there, and I thought about it. I said, I've got plenty of wine there. He goes, I can sit there and drink this beer on my own, or we can have a beer, and we can have a chat. So there you go. And he hands it over to me. And, and he sort of almost shoves it into my hand sort of thing. And I th- okay, yep, no worries. That's an absolute move I would do. 100% I would do it. A lot of my mates in, at home would do it. Yep. Okay, no worries. So I sat down at a beer with him. We had another chat for an hour or so, and then he went. Then he left. So that was pretty good. Nice cold beer, obviously in the fridge and that. He's got a good setup. Cold beer on a really hot day. Oh, that was... Every time someone uh, asked me if I wanted a beer, I always said yes. Um, but I wanted to say yes, but I always said no. And I've been asked a few times lately, and I'm saying no, because I'm going to leave it to the end now. I've got a goal. I want to have a beer at the end. I want to have a beer in a pub at the end, because I had thought about stopping in a couple of pubs on the way through in the towns and have one quick pot. But no, nah, I'm going to save that to the very end. That is going to be something my celebration. I'm going to find a pub and just make a beeline for it. I'll have a really good wash and clean up the night before, because... I'm going to have to go through Lake Alexandrina, and I'm going to have to go around the edge. So going around the edge, hopefully I'll have, hopefully the weather will be conducive that I can sit there and stay for one full day near Gua and have one day, even if it's two days beforehand or whatever, and really clean up properly and go to a pub and have a couple of beers in a pub uh, because that has been, I've not done that on the whole time at the pub, at, on the river. So it's the one thing I want to look forward to is having a beer in a pub. I've had quite a few beers, but I haven't had tap beer in a pub, icy cold. And um, oh, I've always been cold. They've always been cold. But yeah. Anyway, so diverting a bit. Now I sat there and took this beer off him. Thirty-one minutes. And yeah, I'll I'll come back. Yeah, I took this beer off him. I'll come back. <laughs>